Today on the CTV News at 5, shocking discovery. The body of a missing Vulcan man has been found. Plus, winter's back. What it means for those at the city's emergency shelter. And getting closure. Southern Albertans remember the victims of a tragic murder-suicide. First off. CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. A tragic development in the search for a missing Vulcan man. The body of 77-year-old Otto Luce has been found. Otto Bunty Luce is a retired farmer. He was last seen Monday leaving his home. His family reported him missing Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, his SUV was found abandoned in southwest Calgary. Forensic investigators have been combing over the vehicle and his home looking for clues. Air and ground searches have also been conducted. RCMP released surveillance video of Bunty at the Vulcan Petrocan last week as well. RCMP say they received a number of tips over the weekend. Then early this afternoon, officers called a news conference saying they had made significant progress in the search. Our Terry Boat is in Vulcan where the RCMP news conference has just wrapped up. Terry, what are police saying about Luce's death? Well, Jackie, they're saying a lot of things, actually, and what they started out was announcing that they have located the deceased remains of Otto Luce and that he is an apparent victim of a murder. A 35-year-old man and a 28-year-old woman have been arrested by RCMP investigators, and they're expected to be charged with his death. It's expected the male will be charged with murder in the first degree, committing an indignity to human remains, as well as kidnapping and forcible confinement. He was arrested at Claire's home this morning without incident and is presently in RCMP custody. In addition, a 28-year-old female who's believed to be his common-law spouse was also arrested, and she was arrested without incident. She may be charged with being an accessory to murder as well as obstruction of justice. Police say that the arrests are a major step in the investigation. They say that uh, Luce was last seen at a Petro-Canada fuel station in Vulcan on Sunday. And as a result, they, they did locate his vehicle in Calgary, and they started working backwards from there, and as well trying, uh, working with some of the financial institutions in Claire's home in Nanton, they were able to identify a couple of suspects. Okay, so there's lots of details that will be uh, coming out in this case, and uh, we'll let you know more about those later on, Jackie. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Terry. Now, news of Luce's death traveled quickly through the tight-knit community of Vulcan. Those who knew him are in shock. Luce's friend, Ken Major, can't believe it. He says that Luce was such a kind and gentle person who was helpful to everybody. I can't imagine that. But I have heard stories of people that have actually threatened him. And so whether that has anything to do with it, I don't know. We'll have more on this developing story on our news at 6. And winter has finally arrived in southern Alberta. Temperatures plummeted to minus 31 overnight with the wind chill factored in. And they appear to be sticking around for the next few days. Business has picked up at Lethbridge's homeless shelter. Officials say they usually see a higher number of guests come Monday, but they've seen a definite increase with the colder temperatures. Members of the shelter's street team have been out trying to identify those in need of warm clothing or blankets, and they say it's important to take care of the city's most vulnerable when temperatures dip so low. Uh, well, I guess like this weekend yeah, as it's turned the weather's turned on us um, we're just really be like our mobile urban street team has really been on the streets uh, handing out uh, any, like the warm winter gear we have the toe in the hand warmers and gloves hats and I guess he's finding quite a few people out there that are not been wearing that so so they're doing a little bit of harm reduction in regards to the weather. If you think it's cold today, wait until Wednesday when, Dory, it's going to feel more like minus 40 with the wind chill. Oh. Absolutely, and we're, we're going to get a little bit of snow, but the main news, of course, is the wind chill values. Did you know that all of Western Canada, the only warnings are out for wind chill values, not for heavy snowfall warnings, except for one area, and that's the Metro Vancouver area, and a little bit of surrounding uh, circumference around that uh, city is in for heavy snowfall. Other areas, the only warnings are in place for wind chill values, so you know that Arctic air mass is very wide and very deep, and we'll talk more about it in just a couple of minutes. Thanks, Dory. 
A weekend memorial in Lethbridge for three young people killed in a murder-suicide is helping to bring closure to a community shaken by the tragedy. It's been one month since Tanner Craswell, Mitch McLean and Tabitha Steppel were shot to death by Steppel's jealous ex-boyfriend. The sole survivor, Shana Conway, is recovering in Calgary Hospital, but she traveled south to pay her respects. Alicia Fieldberg reports. I'm so grateful for all the love and support. She's the light and hope of this tragedy. Shayna Conway was too weak to speak publicly at the memorial for her three friends, so she prepared a video instead. I want you all to know that I'm doing well. I'm on the road to recovery and looking forward to getting home. Shayna was shot three times and underwent life-saving surgery. She's been in hospital ever since and wasn't sure if she'd be able to attend, but made the trip to pay respect to her friends. Tanner Craswell, Mitch McLean, and Tabitha Steppel were shot to death December 15th by Steppel's ex-boyfriend, Derek Jensen, who then turned the gun on himself. Papa, Papa Rossi. Tabitha's family and friends shared memories of an energetic, happy young woman who loved to dance. Tabitha lit up the room with her fun energy and contagious laugh. She was a young lady who had extraordinary self-esteem and was always, always on the go. The three-hour tribute was arranged like a baseball game with innings for each of the victims. Members of Southern Alberta's baseball community remember Tanner and Mitch as dedicated ball players with hearts of gold. When I think of Krause and Mitch, I think about two of the most determined, loving, loyal, trustworthy, non-materialistic guys who are always up for a good laugh. Our players looked up to Mitch and Tanner each and every day in our clubhouse and will forever be without two of its family. Their retired jerseys hanging in the rafters are symbols of how the Prince Edward Island men have forever left their mark in Alberta. Tanner Croswell and Mitch McLean have been called up to the true major leagues and will continue to turn magnificent double plays in a much better place as true angels in the infield. Family and friends of both men traveled from PEI to attend. Donations and profits from wristbands helped fund the trip and tours of the places the boys called home for the past couple of years. We knew Mitch loved it here in Lethbridge, and now we know the reasons why. The people here are so caring and loving, and Mitch was lucky to have been a part of this community. The community was rocked by the horror of the tragedy and the loss of three young people that touched so many lives and it's drawn even closer in this time of need. We all cherish what we're here for, and then we understand one on the other, and then we can try to help each other, no matter what the situation is. Just knowing that I had a chance to pay my respects and um, had a chance to say goodbye. I just hope that, you know, that they can take some closure to this, this tragedy that's happened and just remember these kids for who they were. Hold your breath. Alicia Fieldberg, CTV News, Lethbridge. Nearly 1,000 people attended the memorial at the Inmax Centre Saturday afternoon, and more than 4,000 tuned in online to watch a live feed of the entire tribute. Well, a Vulcan man is relieved to be on dry land after escaping from a sinking cruise ship off the coast of Italy Saturday. 49-year-old David Healy went to Italy to look at the country's historic architecture. He's a finishing carpenter and a farmer from Vulcan. Healy was on the last lifeboat to leave the ship after the Costa Concordia ran aground and capsized off the coast of Italy. He is currently in Italy in a hotel, but all of his possessions are gone, but the Canadian Embassy is taking care of him. His family is relieved. I know in David he'd be hanging back with the workers probably because he's a worker himself, he's a carpenter. So I bet he was no hurry to get off the ship. He's a good swimmer, he's a real good swimmer. The captain of the ship has been jailed. The ship's owner says it's because he made an unauthorized course deviation, something prosecutors are calling a reckless maneuver. A Lethbridge political scientist says proposed changes to Canada's voting rules will help bring election laws into the 21st century and also give Elections Canada a little more respect in the eyes of Canadian voters. The Conservative government announced via Twitter that the government will change a law that prevents Canadians from announcing federal election results before the polls are closed. That means internet junkies or others who share early election results won't be lawbreakers anymore. The blackout rules prevailed, prevented the eastern results rather from being announced before polls closed in the West. University of Lethbridge political scientists say that the law was ridiculous and scrapping it would undermine, will not undermine the election process. 
A new addition may be on its way for WestJet, which could include Lethbridge. The Calgary-based airline is considering a short-haul regional airline with a launch date as early as 2013, including flights to the Lethbridge County Airport. It will use a fleet of 40 smaller aircraft. The idea is being floated to its staff, who are also shareholders in the company. WestJet has a 71-city network in North America and the Caribbean. And on the financial markets today, in the U.S., the markets were closed for Martin Luther King Day, but there's still lots of news to move markets elsewhere.